SRAB Project-Based Learning incorporates six powerful practices. This video will focus on one of those practices, ongoing and purposeful feedback, revision, and reflection. And if you want to, you can cut back here. It don't say where you have to cut. So you can cut this one of these wired into this. You could put a T right here and right here is what you're saying. Yeah, and then just run it straight down to the back of the car. Incorporating ongoing feedback and reflection as students are working through a PBL supports students to solidify learning and fine-tune their ideas so they can produce their highest quality work. At the Wood County Technology Center, students have been working on designing therapeutic cars for kids who lack mobility. These are probably signals, these are probably your motors. Uh, if we could look at your motors, we'd be able to tell. So you can cut just one of these wired into this and then take it from that side. I was doing it for the uh, camera. Well, you got to do your switch too. Yeah. So you might as well think about it. If this car takes off quick and their head falls back. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that it's definitely, so we're going to yeah. put some real stress on it, make sure it's strong enough. If you have it fit in this indentation, yeah. then the walls are not going to be very thick on this side. See what I mean? Yeah. Providing feedback mid-project helps students to test and revise ideas. Feedback can come from peers or from community partners. This is Hayden's car. We're starting with Hayden's car. A little bit closer over here. Our main role was to focus on the safety aspect of the car so that we could make sure that when they're actually placed in the car that they are comfortable and there's no way they can get hurt. And this is also going to help them move up onto like the next level of like what they're going to be in whenever they're done with these cars. So like a different type of wheelchair, a powered wheelchair, whatever their parents decide to put them in, this is going to help them grow and develop to be in there. Okay, so the first thing uh, we did or the first modification we made was extending the, the steel tubes on the bottom since Hayden is taller than the two other kids. So he has four more inches of leg room. Uh, metal pipes that we put in run all the way from the front to the back. The metal conduit is what I was holding it up by. The kill switch, the rear view camera. And also we are going to do away with the, the whole steering wheel control. That's all going to be gone. And then it's just going to be operated by one joystick. Where were you thinking the joystick's going to go? Um, since he is right hand, we're going to put it over here. Okay. And we're also going to put his tablet over there so we can't do both at the same time. How far away from Hayden do you think the joystick is going to be placed? Well, what we're hoping to be able to do is have it to where it can be on a uh, track and rail system so that the parents can move it as he gets stronger with his arm to be able to reach farther. We have his arm measurements yes, and everything, we do. right? So we'll, we'll put it wherever, like how long his arm is, and then like with a little bit of bend, and then eventually, hopefully, he can get his arm totally out, and then that rail system will work the way it's designed to. The parents said that they wanted him later in life to be able to start using a motorized wheelchair, and since those have a joystick, I figured this will too. I think that's a great idea. It'll make a good practice, get him familiar with it. So that's the main goal of this, is to get him to progress to using a motorized wheelchair. Do you have any other goals in mind? Uh, mostly just the arm strength, being able to actually reach out and touch things, because right now he holds his arms in. He'll be able to do more stuff with his arms if he practices in here. So that's, that's one of our main goals. Alignment of the body is key. So anything that we can do to make alignment better will promote more hand function. So just really keep that in mind. One thing he does on his wheelchairs is just a simple strap over his feet to just kind of keep them in, in place, not restricting him, but just kind of securing them in there. So I think that would be an easy modification okay. too. That would be very easy. Just Velcro or something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, do you guys think that would be? Yeah. So we might, because right now the controller is to go forward, it's down there. So we might be able to change and then put it like right here. So it's the. Are you going to use like a joystick? joystick. Yeah, it's going to be a joystick. It's going to be a joystick. I think all of us is going for a joystick. So we've transitioned to an actual power wheelchair. <coughs> okay. So like, will it be able to like move back and yeah, forth? Yeah, that's what we're planning on okay. having it. So is the tray going to be like above where you guys have it now or under? Like 
Well, we're right gonna have line. to measure out like when his body sits down, when it's gonna come out, how much it's gonna come out, and how high it's gonna be. Okay. Now on the sides, like on the doors right here, are mm -hmm. you gonna put like any cushions so like if he does like let's say? Well, we can always add cushioning okay. to the vehicle. Sides. The right. Sides if he needs cushioning. Just in case, like if he are gonna move, like you wanna. Yeah. yeah. We have. We might. We're thinking of probably putting pool noodles on okay. the side. So the great thing about this car is that Grayson is actually here. So I think a great idea would be getting him inside of the car to see mm. where his body actually fits in it, where yeah. he sits in it, what his body looks like in it, so that it'll give us a better idea about maybe what cushions or what supports may be needed. Okay. That's actually probably going to need to be a little, something a little sturdier. sturdier. This is his neck position all the time. So, okay. So. Right. So he almost needs held up and back a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we're gonna have like a support plastic support that comes out and it's gonna hold his head. I would honestly do it come down. Come down. Yeah, like over, because I, I mean for him positioning is number one. This looks great. Yeah. His arm length is great. I'm just if he's not comfortable, he's not gonna use it. Is his yes. length length good? It, I think it looks good. Okay. Yeah. Does yeah. he need support around the? Uh, right the here, sides? trunk like trunk, under yeah, under the armpit. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can probably put something around right here out. And we need to work on the next support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything else looks really great. Okay. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Are you excited? You're tired? Will this be the one car you actually go to sleep in, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put like some kind of a foam around, I guess. Just have a, it wouldn't be super hard on. Um, remember I sent you guys over the other day, the firefighting said they had a splint. Yeah, they had a flexible splint. Yeah. So that splint, they can actually flex around his neck and down. It down. can hold him down. Mm. And then we could pad the top of it or pad the top attach of. this to this the top to it. of it. So, so you won't feel it. Yeah. So it's just like that. I mean, yeah. Thing. What does these do? Those are brakes. Oh, the brakes. Brakes and then this is the tilt, tilt. system. So, so does he have a certain degree that he likes? Right, yeah, that's right. Here. 30 30 so he likes yeah. lying back. Or... Yeah, just enough to, for him not to have his head on his chest all the okay. time. Okay. So we need to look at the angle. And we need to work on his shoulders. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're right here. Right. So when you get your car in design, you need to make sure the front of your car, the front of the seat, is raised up 30 degrees, so it kicks him back. Shoulders to kind of. That's 30 degrees. The 30 degrees helps him. When he's sitting up straight, he'll fall over. So if he's 30 degrees back, he'll always fall back. And the shoulders are just there, just yeah. in case he does leave. Yep. This was the first time that we got to meet the engineering students and see them interact with the therapeutic services students as well was really cool. On a daily basis with our job, we work with many different disciplines. We work with speech therapists, physical therapists, teachers, aides, and it was really neat to see at such a young age, these kids are doing that already. And it was really cool to just be able to facilitate that and kind of open their eyes a little bit to things that we do automatically. I think giving feedback to them was a wonderful experience for both them and us. They had really great ideas for ways to make them feel more comfortable and allow them to take rest breaks and things that I personally wouldn't have thought of. It was neat to see how a lot of the ideas that they came up with were ideas that I already had in my head. Being an occupational therapist and already being in the field and someone not being an occupational therapist already having some of those thoughts I thought was really cool. I'm excited to see them become more independent and to be able to navigate the schools without someone having to push behind them. To get to see them be able to stop in the hallway and look at something that they find interesting without passing by it. And so just giving them that autonomy and I think that'll be really exciting.